Feedback. Listen to your learners. It's essential as educators that we listen to our learners to gauge their opinions and improve our teaching. There are several Moodle activities for surveying students. Here we look at feedback, which allows you to create your own questions of different types. In this feedback activity, the student is asked to give her opinion on a course. She has multiple choice questions, a short text question and a longer text question. This student didn't use the Moodle app, but when our second student completes the feedback and responds yes to the Moodle app question, note that he's presented with some extra response-specific questions. With the feedback activity, you can make questions display dependent on previous responses. Setting up feedback. The teacher in our vegetarian cooking course adds the feedback activity by turning on the editing, selecting feedback from the activity chooser and then giving it a name and description which may be displayed on the course page by ticking the box. Other settings can be expanded by clicking the links. Availability allows you to set a period of time when the feedback will or will not be available. In question and submission settings, you can choose whether the submissions are anonymous or usernames are recorded, but note that this is not totally secure, as the logs will still reveal identities. You can allow users to submit more than once. You might want this for anonymous feedback. To be notified when feedback is completed, and to have questions auto-numbered or not. After submission, that's once students have completed the feedback, you can provide a link to the analysis, you can add a message of thanks or information, and you can give a link to another part of the course if you feel it's necessary. And in activity completion, you can set completion only when a student completes and submits the feedback. When we save and display, we can add our questions by clicking the Edit Questions link and choosing from the drop-down. Here's a multiple choice question. We tick the box if we want to force students to answer this question and we can allow one or multiple answers and then we add the answers. Setting Not Selected to Yes means this won't appear as an option. Answers must be added on separate lines. Here's a short text answer question. It's worth experimenting with text field width and maximum characters accepted. Now we can continue our feedback by adding more questions. But let's try making some responses dependent on previous responses. As we make this new multiple choice question about the Moodle app, we give it a label. This is important for future reference. We then have to add a page break and we need to add another page break at the end of the dependent questions so we are enclosing them in their own page. For each conditional question we add, we must choose a dependence item, that's the label we added before. So this question depends on the question with the label Moodle app. Then we must choose the answer our new question will depend on. We select yes because we only want the question to appear if students tell us that, yes, they used the Moodle app. You see, these dependent questions appear in grey to the teacher. Once we've added any dependent questions, it's important to remember to add that second page break, and then we can continue with any further questions which apply to all students. Finally, let's look at those other tabs. We can edit the questions from Edit, we can save the questions as a template to use elsewhere or we can import a previously made template. Once students have completed the feedback, a graphical analysis is available also in chart form and downloadable to Excel and individual responses can also be viewed. To summarise, feedback allows you to listen to learners and improve their course experience.